Welcome to yet another recap and review of the latest episode of Titans. Episode 11 aired this past Friday. I know I'm a few days late, but there was a lot to unpack in this episode. Plus, like I said, I got a lot of other videos and projects that I'm working on at the moment. Forgive me for being a little bit tardy, but let's talk about this episode because this was a step in the right direction. There was a lot of good shit that happened this week. Most of the good or interesting shit this week revolved around the Titans, or at least the Lady Titans coming back together, and Dick taking the final leg of his journey to becoming Nightwing, which it's been two seasons. It's a about damn time. Easily the least interesting aspect of this episode was Jason and Rose and their storyline, but we'll get to them in a sec. This episode starts off and the first half of it is about catching up with all the individual Titans that are split up, specifically the women Titans. You don't see anything about Hank and like I said, Jason and Rose are off on a date in Gotham or something like that. You do see Donna, Rachel, Corey, and Don dealing with stuff in their own different way. Don is driving through Wyoming and she decides to throw Hank shit out in the garbage, but before she leaves, she decides to take a picture of all of them together for sentimental purposes, I guess. While Rachel is having bad dreams, what else is new? She's been having bad dreams for two seasons now. She's probably going to be having bad dreams for the rest of her life now I think about it. She has a nightmare that Dick ends up getting killed by Deathstroke, like at some weird funeral site or whatever, and she also is having these weird images pop into her head about a diner in the middle of Nevada. This is kind of clumsy right off the bat. Rachel is having these visions of this weird diner in the middle of Nevada, which is going to become very important later. Also, the girls that she's hanging out with at this place, one of them comes up and tells the girl that she's been befriending for the last week. Hey, your father's dead. Girl gives absolutely no fucks. Like, she just does not care. And I'm just kind of like, oh, so she doesn't care. Rachel is not held accountable for her actions. Rachel doesn't even really seem to understand that she did this. Yep. It ended up being pointless. It ended up not mattering at all, which, you know what, I could have called that. Catch up with Donna, and once again, she's trying to find her ass with two hands and a map. She's just walking around Titan's Tower not doing shit. I'm like, call Corey. Like, somebody call Corey. Did Corey just throw her cell phone into the river? Did she burn that shit up too when she met Blackfire a couple weeks ago? Either way, Donna does get a weird message that she thinks is from Rachel that tells her, hey, go to this diner or blah, blah, blah. And so I guess she takes off to go looking for this diner. I'm actually a little bit more iffy with what they decided to do with Corey's character because we haven't seen Corey's character in two weeks now. Turns out in the last week and a half or so, Corey got really depressed and she just went off to Vegas and she got drunk and decided to have sex with a psychiatrist or something. Kind of like, I get that she's depressed over her parents being killed by her sister and I get that she's depressed because she can't fly in her ship and go off to Tamaran and kick her sister's ass. For her to openly admit to the psychiatrist and be like, I have no family, I have no purpose here. And I'm just like, literally you and Rachel were calling each other your people a few weeks ago. Rachel, Gar, Dick, Don, are you telling me you now don't care about any of them? This is just such a weird direction to take her character. I don't really get why she decided to go off and be depressed like this, but eh, we just needed her to be close to Nevada. So eventually all of the girl titans end up at this diner in Nevada, and that's because Bruce Wayne has organized for them to meet there. Clumsy how Bruce Wayne organizes them to meet there. I'm not sure how he put the images in Rachel's head that told her that this is where she needed to go. I'm not sure if it was Rachel or if it was Bruce that hacked into Don's radio while she was driving and hinted that maybe this is where she needed to go, or that caused her engine to fail right outside the diner pretty much. I know Bruce Wayne is ultra connected and the dude is rich obviously and he's got people who know people who know people. He's got eyes everywhere. I get all that. But you're telling me this dude tracked Corey all the way to Vegas into her room and he somehow was able to hack into the TV in her room, show her this commercial for this diner so that she knew to go to this diner. Well, it's a little bit clumsy how we all decided to get here but the point is that we got here and that we got here so that Bruce could basically mansplain to the rest of the women. You guys are a family. You need to start acting like a family. Family, okay, just because a family goes through some shit big deal every family goes through some shit point is that you go through some shit together You get through it together. You work through it together You become stronger together as a family as a result it essentially tells the women of the group that you guys need to get off your ass and do something If you're not gonna look out for each other who is I like the way that older Bruce Wayne handled himself in this situation He also abruptly leaves and just leaves them to think about the shit I guess it seems like the women of the group do take his words to heart They also find out through him that Gar and Connor have been kidnapped by Cadmus nearly pissed me off was the scene right after this because the girls go outside the diner and then they decide to split up. Donna and Don are actually going to go back to San Francisco so that they can look for Gar and Connor. Meanwhile, Rachel and Corey, I guess, are going to go look for Dick because they find out randomly from some TV station in the diner that Dick is in prison now. What pissed me off was that Rachel was like, hey, I need you guys' help. We need to go get Dick. We got to help him out. And then Donna is basically like, screw Dick. He's on his own. Let me tell you, I had a black moment. I almost lost my mind. I had to do one of those long, slow, drawn out bitches. You know what I'm talking about. I just had to hit her with one of those bitches. 
ditch Don too. Don was ditching Dick too. I'm like, woman, you you used to ride the man's face. What happened to the loyalty? Anna, you're like his best friend. You're his sister. You grew up together. You're really just gonna be like, nah, Dick's okay. He can handle himself. We don't need to worry about him. I'm not. He's on his own basically. Man, these hoes really ain't loyal. And at this point, I feel like I'm just done with Donna. I'm done with Don. If they died in the next two weeks, I wouldn't really care that much. Of course, I'd miss them because they're hot and because individually Don is an okay character, but it's just Donna is just beyond redemption at this point. She needs to die and I need to see another Amazon take her place. The big thing that drives the story forward is Dick finally getting over his moping and his depression in his cell in this prison to become Nightwing. At this point, I'm just kind of like, okay, it's been two seasons of mopey emo Dick that's just really depressed, really feels guilty about a lot of things, beats himself up, and that's really what this episode was about, was the final beating himself up session to get him to Nightwing. I like the fact that older Bruce Wayne pops in and out of Dick's consciousness in this season. Like, he pretty much speaks to him. He's like an inner monologue that he's dealing with, telling him the same thing that he told the girls, basically. He's like, you need to get off your ass. You need to get over it. You need to realize that Jericho is still alive. Yes, this confirms the theory that I and a lot of other people had from a few episodes ago when Dick went to go visit Deathstroke, and we noticed that there was something a little bit weird about that meeting. Turns out that when Deathstroke stabbed Jericho, he probably didn't actually kill Jericho. Jericho is alive, except he's being held captive inside Deathstroke. What other reason would Deathstroke's ex-wife have to have him at that house and not have a big problem with it? I mean, she probably would hate Deathstroke just as much, right? This entire sequence is awesome. His fight between Bruce, I love the way that the lighting changes between shadows and between blue and between bright. He kicks his ass because, you know, of course, Bruce kicks his ass because he's Bruce freaking Wayne. I love how he grabbed the battle wings and he threw them back at Dick. The point of this was to evolve Dick to a point of acceptance where he could be like, okay, you know what? Yep, I get it. I own my shit. I need to become someone else. Kind of, you know, kind of like Arrow. Corey and Rachel get to the prison to break him out. You notice that Dick has already left, but he has scribbled a message on the wall for him. It says, Jericho is still alive. And it's kind of like, holy shit. How's this gonna turn out? I said earlier, the least interesting aspect of this episode was the Jason and the Rose angle. Like, I get it. I get why their characters would be drawn to each other. They haven't really done much with Rose this entire season. She's been sullen. She's been distant. She's constantly tried to run away. So it ended up being predictable as shit when she called Deathstroke later on in the episode and it's revealed that, aha, she's the mole. She's the one that's been feeding him intel from inside Titan's Tower. Didn't really have that impact. Again, I didn't really feel that invested in Rose to begin with. So I feel like this reveal was kind of weak sauce, especially because we never really got to see her struggle with this. Her and Jason fell in love after a span of what, like a week and a half or something like that, so it's hard to really feel invested in that either. This explains why Deathstroke is like always 10 steps ahead of the Titans at the same time. Deathstroke's pissed because nobody says no to Deathstroke. Think about it. We first met Rose earlier in the season when she was escaping from Deathstroke because Deathstroke was trying to kill her. You've seen how Deathstroke operates in the show. Do you really think that if he wanted Rose dead, she wouldn't be dead? No. He, this was a plant from day one. Shit that the older Titans were complaining about a few episodes ago when they blamed it on Jason? Guess what? It was actually Rose. That makes sense now. The episode ends with kind of a cliffhanger. Gar is still being held captive by Cadmus. They've been experimenting on him. They've been messing with his head. They put him in some kind of fake dream sequence where somehow through the push of a button now they can control his metamorphosis. All of a sudden now Cadmus can control Gar and him transforming into his tiger. And so he transforms into a tiger. He kills this woman that enters the room. It's a pretty scary and dark shit. Not to mention if this is what they're doing to Gar, what are they doing to Connor? Now the finale is pretty much set. We know that Nightwing is about to happen. We know that there's a showdown coming between Deathstroke and with Cadmus. Those are my thoughts on the episode that was. I thought it was a step in the right direction. A lot of good things happened this week. Let me know how you felt about the episode in the comments down below. And if you like what you see, tell me how you feel. And stay tuned to hear more from the Man of Steel. Peace.